Today we visit Pompeii, a city that was buried by ash and lava in the eruption of Vesuvius in 79 AD, followed by a walk around the caldera of Mount Vesuvius. After breakfast, we had a three quarters of an hour coach ride down to Pompeii. After getting our tickets, we headed towards Porta Marina, where we met our guide. In Roman times, this was the seafront, but is now a kilometre inland. After passing through Porta Marina, there are house remains on the left and the Temple of Venus to the right. The temple is on a panoramic viewpoint. It is one of the oldest in Pompeii, but little remains apart from some columns and the wall backing onto Via Marina. A little further down Via Marina, on the right, is the Basilica. This important public building is a courthouse. It had three naves supported by these pillars. The main entrance was from the Forum at the west end, and at the opposite end was the Tribunal, the place where the magistrates sat. So it's pre-Roman building. But then uh, even here, Romans transformed very much. The pillars that you see there, telling about the Roman period, because they are made of Greek. And I repeat, the Greek word uh, underlines the latest. On the opposite side of Via Marina, from the Basilica, is the Temple of Apollo, dating from the 6th century BC. The Forum is to the east of the Basilica and Temple of Apollo. This pedestrian area was the centre of political and religious life. It contains a number of pedestals on which statues of leading figures once stood. Surrounding it on three sides was a two-storey portico. At the north, the orator's po podium is flanked by two arches. To the east are public buildings and temples. This building is the Temple of Augusta. And there is a close maker's shop. And what is the most remarkable feature? This intricate frieze decorates the entrance to the Guild of Fabric Dyers and Laundries. To the north are municipal buildings. On the west of the Forum was a vegetable market in Uranus, an area now used to store archaeological finds and casts of some of the earthquake victims. On the opposite side of the Forum, from Via Marina, is the Via del Abundanza. The stone bollards stop vehicles entering the Forum from it. This street was lined by shops and entrances to houses behind them. A water trough had pointed to the brothel. Roads led off on both sides. This one, Via dei Teatri, leads to the Triangular Forum. So this was a uh, previous uh, uh, forum before the one we passed. This used to be the forum. Beside this forum is the theatre. The stage was rebuilt after the AD 62 earthquake. Names of patrons who funded this are engraved in the front seats. Behind the stage is the gladiator school. A canopy was supported from these to protect the audience. Back at the shopping street, we follow the signs to the brothel. Next door is the lupinari, or brothel. The paving is rutted by cartwheels. Inside the lupinari are murals showing options for the customers and uh, graffiti left by the customers. The sex workers had these stone beds inside small cells to work on. Outside were remains of Roman water pipe work. To the north of the Forum, through this triumphal arch, 
for the Forum Baths. This entrance passage leads to the open gymnasium area. And through this passage is the men's locker room. This is the original mosaic floor. There were many wooden shelves, you know, inside into the light lockers. Off the locker room were the frigidarium cold top and the tepidarium or warm room. Statues surrounded the base of the ornate ceiling of the tepidarium. Remains of a, a bronze bench. The caldarium or hot room has a, a ribbed ceiling to run condensation to the edges. It was heated through double walls. At one end was a hot tub and at the other a marble basin displaying the names of its sponsors. Continuing north through Caligula's Arch, we came to the House of the Fawn, one of the largest private houses in Pompeii. And then here. <laughs> Ave, at the entrance, welcomed visitors. The statue which gave the house its name. The geometric mosaic. The Alexander the Great mosaic. Back in Via d'Abondanza is a house of Casca Longus. The most notable item here is a marble table stand that once belonged to Casca, a plotter in the killing of Julius Caesar. Near the end of Via d'Abondanza was the house of Venus in the Shell, so called because of the large frescoes on the rear wall of the courtyard. These have survived the eruption of AD 79 and bombing in 1943. Art doesn't have to be good to survive. On the left is Mars, in the centre is Venus in the shell, and at the right are flowers and birds at a fountain. Next door is the house of Octavius Quartio. The dining room is decorated in white and red. There are scenes from the Iliad in another room. Frescoes of Narcissus and Pyramus committing suicide. Our final destination was the amphitheatre. We entered through the gladiator's tunnel. In Roman times, they would fight here in front of crowds of 20,000. We left the amphitheatre by the exit for the slain. At the exit to the site was a display of casts of the final positions of eruption victims, frozen in time by the pyroclastic flow that engulfed them. <laughs>